Number 54. The mass of a hydrogen atom, which is H1, is 1.007825 AMU. That of a tritium ion, which is H3, is 3.01605 AMU. And that of a alpha particle is 4.00150 AMU. Okay. How much energy in kilojoules per mole of the uh, helium-4 produced is released by the following fusion reaction? And then we have this reaction right here. So let's just write it out a little bit bigger. We have our standard hydrogen, right, which has a one on top, one on the bottom, and capital H. So this is just our standard hydrogen, plus the tritium. This is a isotope of hydrogen that is not on the periodic table, but just like tritium and, you know, deuterium, which is heavy hydrogen, it's H2. Um, those are also just different isotopes of hydrogen, but these coming together are going to produce a helium atom, HE, with a four on the top and the two on the bottom. And this four is like in the middle of nowhere. So let's bring it, bring them down to reality, right? Okay, so we have this. Now, let's see, what did they give us? Well, they said that the mass of a hydrogen atom, the one, right, the one one, is 1.007825 AMU. Okay. And they also said, maybe what I'll do is I'll put this on the bottom here. Okay. So we have this mass of the hydrogen one. The tritium ion is 3.01605 AMUs. Okay. And then they say that the alpha particle is 4.00150 AMUs. But remember that an alpha particle is the same thing as a four on top, two on the bottom helium. And that's what's in here. This is technically an alpha particle. They just masked it, you know, masked it as um, a helium. But that's what an alpha particle is. And we know, or they told us, that we have 4.00150 AMUs for this guy. Okay. Now, at the end of the day, we want to know how much energy is provided for this reaction, right? Specifically, we want it in kilojoules per mole, so we will take note of that. Um, but energy, right? This is a fusion reaction. I know that this is fusion because I am fusing together two smaller atoms, right? He hydrogens are, are smaller than heliums, and I'm pushing them together to make one bigger atom, which is helium. Fission, on the other hand, is taking bigger atoms and breaking them apart into smaller atoms. Now, it doesn't matter. Fusion or fission, they are both exothermic, which means that you will produce a lot of energy, and that energy is escaping into the atmosphere. So with this one, I know that my energy has to be on the side here, right? But now the question is, how much energy? That's literally what the question is, right? So we don't know how much energy is here. But remember, conservation of mass, right, means that whatever mass is total on this side has to equal the total mass on the product side. And always with fusion, your products, so the, the helium in this case that you're producing, is always going to be a lower value than the sum of what you started because where'd the rest of the mass go, right? It didn't just poof. It's not like a magician and it poofs randomly, right? It's got to account for somewhere. That's where the missing mass goes. It gets converted into energy. So all that lost mass just gets converted into energy. So that's the first thing that we should do, right? We should figure out what this side equals and see how much energy in mass do we have? All right, so if we add these two numbers up, right, 1.007825, and I just want to make sure, oh, L1, hello, 1.007825, I just want to make sure that I have the right numbers, 1.007825 plus the tritium, 3.01605, 3.01605, okay? So the total on this side has to be 4. 
023875 AMU. So that means on the other side, it should be 4.023875 AMUs. But this helium is only 4.00150 AMUs. So what would this energy be in AMUs? Yeah, we would just take these values and subtract them, right? So I'm going to take this value and subtract it by 4.00150. And voila, now we know at least um, the energy amount in AMUs. 22375 AMUs. But that's not good enough. We need to convert this amount of AMUs into kilojoules. All right, well, how are we going to do that? Well, now we're talking about some unit of joules. We're talking about nuclear chemistry, right? And we have some type of mass, right? In AMU, there is a conversion between AMUs to kilograms. So if you are in nuclear chemistry, which obviously we are, right, and you're trying to find out an energy value, right, capital E for energy, there's usually only one formula that you're going to use, and that is this one, the E equals MC squared. So maybe we'll put that over here. Now the capital E is your energy. That's what we're searching for. And just know that if you are using this formula, the energy is going to come out in joules. But we have to convert from joules to kilojoules, which we will do later. Now the M is classified as the mass defect. I don't like to call it the mass defect. I like to just call it the difference. And basically, it's the mass that was the transferred mass to your energy. The difference between this side and this side with the helium. So in this case, we did find out that the difference was 0 0.022375 AMUs. But now this formula, E equals NC squared, right? Mr. Albert Einstein came up with this theory. Um, since, you know, Albert Einstein is, is you know, as a physicist, right? The standard units for physics is not AMU. It's not even grams. It's kilograms. So we have to convert the AMU into kilograms. But I just wrote down here what that conversion is. One AMU equals 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. I mean, atomic mass unit, AMU, they're very, 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 very small. So let's just quickly convert this into kilograms. So 0 0.022 375 AMU. We are just converting, so times by a ratio. I'm going to move this over. And maybe what I'll do is I'll make this a little bit prettier, right? We'll make a bigger one. We don't want the unit AMU that goes on the bottom, and we want kilograms. According to our, um, according to our conversion factor, 1 AMU equals the 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 27th. So I'm just going to have to multiply that value. AMUs cancel out. And now I'm just going to take this value and times it by 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 27. Just making sure that everything looks good here. Looks good to me. And there we go. I'm going to get rid of this conversion now since we have it. So this is 3.715 times 10 to the negative 29th, and that's in kilograms. So we have this mass now, and the C value, right, that's a constant value. That's the speed of light. That is 2.998 if you want to use the, you know, the long form number. But if you want to round this to three, that is fine with me. 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So that's a constant number. Either memorize it as three times 10 to the eighth or 2.998 raised to the eighth. Um, either one is fine with me. But now since we have both values, we can solve and solve for the energy. So E equals the new mass in kilograms, 
3.715 times 10 to the negative 29th, and I'm going to times that by c squared, so 2.998 times 10 to the 8th, and I can plug this all into the calculator at once. I love my TI-84, so I'm just going to take this value, bloop, times it by parentheses, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth. You can close those parentheses and raise them if you wanted. I didn't even need the parentheses, I don't think, but just to make sure. Press enter, and there we go. Now the E value that we just get out, the 3.339, that's good, times 10 to the negative 12th, that's in joules. So the first thing I have to do is I just have to convert from joules to kilojoules. But we know how to go from joules to kilojoules, right? Joules to kilojoules is just dividing by 1,000. I'm just going to take this value and divide by 1,000. So all you're doing is you're just manipulating the decimal, right? So now we have 3.3 three three nine times ten to the negative fifteenth kilojoules okay now hold the phone because this right we were talking about specific atoms here right i literally had one atom of hydrogen with one atom of tritium which will give us one alpha particle or one atom of helium. So all of this math that I just did, this is in kilojoules per one atom. But the idea here is that they don't want atoms, they want kilojoules per mole, right? So we have one more conversion to do because I don't want atoms anymore, I want moles. And since we were in atomic mass units, we have to convert from atoms, atomic atom, into moles. Hmm, atoms to moles, right? Atoms on the top, mole on the bottom, right? I put the atom on the top now because I want atom to cancel out. And what's that conversion between moles and atoms? Did you say avocado? Did you say avocado toast? <laughs> you are right. It's Avogadro's number, right? One mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Or you could say 6.02. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, but either way, you will get the same or roughly the same answer, just, you know, rounding purposes. So I'm just going to take this whole value here. Oh, boy. That was weird. But I'm going to take this number. And times it by Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And now I'm in moles. And there we go. So now I got to, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 2.01. And yeah, I mean, we do have, we do have um, sig figs here, but does anyone care? I don't care. 2.01, I mean, you could extend this out. 2.01010, you know, 10 if we round it up to 9. But this would be times 10 to the 9th, right? Let me just double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep. And now we are in kilojoules per mole. And that is a lot of energy, right? You would think that, you know, by us finding... The 3.39 times 10 to the negative 15th, um, that's a small number. But remember, this is the amount given off for every atom of helium. There's millions and millions and millions of atoms in one mole. So basically, you're taking all the atoms that you got in one mole and timesing them, and now you're starting to cook with some fire. <laughs> and that's why these are highly, uh, you know, reactive, very, very, very exothermic. So yeah, there's your answer. I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, like the video if you haven't already. Just gets the word out there that this channel exists in the YouTube universe. 
Thank you for so much for all your support. Um, yeah, let's keep rocking and rolling. Keep studying hard. Good luck on those tests and quizzes, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.